Hey what up guys, welcome back to my programming channel and today we're going to discuss how blockchain works and we are going to answer a very interesting question, namely what is stopping me from telling Bitcoin blockchain that I have a million Bitcoins? So as we talked about yesterday guys, uh, Bitcoin is a decentralized network, a decentralized protocol, meaning that there is no central entity that can verify uh, my transaction. So what is the mechanism that stops me from uh, tricking the whole network and telling everyone that I have 1 million bitcoins? Let's talk about it. So before we can understand uh, blockchain, we need to understand two, uh, two things. First of all, uh, what a hash function is and how a hash function works. And number two, we need to understand what a Merkle tree is and how Merkle trees work. So let's get into what a hash function is. And I have, I've made a picture just for you guys. So as we can see here, a hash function is a one way function guys, meaning that it can take an input and uh, the input is usually a sequence of uh, bits. So it could be a movie like this, or it can be a picture. It can be any digital data guys. So the hash function will take this input uh, and produce a fixed size value as output. So for example, if I ins insert this input, I'll get this output. However, guys, however, if I change only one bit in this input, only one bit, this whole output will be completely different. It will be completely different, guys. And so this is the property number one of hash functions. If I change only a single bit, the output will be completely different. And the second property, guys, is that this is a one-way function, as I said before. There is no way for me to figure out the input if I only have the output. So if I have the input, I can get the output. However, if I only have the output, there is no way for me to get the input. So this is how hash functions work, guys. They take an input and produce a fixed size output. I mean, the input can be many gigabytes of data, but the output will be usually be a fixed size value that is a lot smaller than the input. And there will be no way for me to go back to the input. Right, so this is a hash function, guys. The next thing we need to understand is what, what a Merkle tree is. And a Merkle tree is a data structure where each layer is... Um, a co combination of hashes from the previous layer. L let me show you how, how this works with another picture. Let's say I have two values here. To get the next value in the tree, I hash them, I, I combine them to a single hash and get this value. So guys, uh, as, as I told you before, this is a one-way function. So by having those two values, I can get this value. But by only having this value, there's no way for me, for me to figure out those two values. And I do the same thing here. And then I combine those two values into this final value, the root value. And so this root value will be a representation of um, this data structure. But there's no way for me to go back and figure out all the individual values in the tree. That would be very difficult. Uh, so this is a Merkle, Merkle tree, guys. We combine uh, values from the previous uh, layer in the tree to get the next uh, layer, to uh, the next value. Right, so now we understand what a hash function is and what a Merkle tree is. Uh, so, so guys, now we can start talking about a blockchain. What is a blockchain? So I have another picture for you guys, which illustrates the blockchain. And the blockchain really is a huge Merkle tree, as you, as you will see. So uh, all blockchains have some kind of root value. And when I do a transaction, for example, when I send 10 Bitcoins to my friend, this will be a transaction. And this transaction will be hashed together with the previous root and create a new root. So 
let me show you again. So this is almost like, it's very like a Merkle tree. In fact, it is a Merkle tree where I have a, a root and then I, I hash it with the transaction and I get a new root. Uh, like this. So I have a root, I hash it with the transaction and get a new root. And then another transaction comes in and it get ha gets hashed with this root and creates a new root. And so guys, now we can really understand why I can't trick the blockchain. Uh, because if I wanted to trick the blockchain, I would have to say that in some transaction before, I received 1 million bitcoins. However, however guys, the network will then take my transaction that, that I say happened, but in reality it never happened, and they will just verify, they will hash my fake transaction with previous root, uh, and, then, and they will get a different new root than uh, compared to what everyone else has in their copy of the blockchain. So this way it's impossible for anyone to trick the system because uh, everyone else will be able to verify the tr your transaction and whether it is um, valid or not. Uh, so this is how Bitcoin blockchain wor works, uh, guys. We have uh, transactions that get merge into the blockchain by hash functions and they cr create a new route and then next transaction will be merged into the blockchain by hashing it with the uh, current route and this will create a new route and so on and so everyone can verify each transaction and there is no way to fake it okay guys so this is a, a bitcoin blockchain an interesting uh, aspect or an interesting question is okay how does ethereum blockchain work because as we talked about yesterday blockchain uh, bitcoin blockchain is just a blockchain for transferring value and verifying transactions uh, whereas uh, ethereum blockchain actually can execute code ethereum is a decentralized uh, app platform, a platform for decentralized application, meaning that you can write decentralized apps. So what is the difference between this Bitcoin blockchain and Ethereum blockchain? Well, in Bitcoin blockchain, we have transactions that get, get merged into the blockchain uh, like this, and they create new routes in each step. However, in Ethereum blockchain, instead of transactions, we have states. And so as a software developer, you, you're you most probably familiar with, with states, guys. And the state is just a, a uh, well, a, a configuration your program is at, uh, at a specific time point. So when I execute my code on Ethereum blockchain, each and every state will be merged into the blockchain in, and it will be publicly visible, guys. And so it will then in the future, we, we could see all the previous states of all the programs that ever got executed on the blockchain. And this is really mind blowing. And a question I have is how can this system ever scale? Because it seems like it's an enormous amount of states that will be created in, in the Ethereum blockchain. However, I'm sure they have they have it figured out, and um, I mean it works. Uh, Ethereum works, so I'm sure they have some kind of mechanism that makes this possible. But every single state uh, in your programs will be merged into the Ethereum blockchain, and everyone will be able to verify all the states. Um, <clears throat> so that's it, guys. We we talked about how a blockchain works and how. Bitcoin versus Ethereum blockchain work and why I can't trick the Bitcoin blockchain and tell that I have a million Bitcoins. Let, let's just do a quick recap. So we have a hash function and th this takes an input and gives me an output and I can never go back. We have a Merkle tree which um, can hash two values together and create a combined hash which will be the root of, of, the, of these two uh, hashes like a root hash. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we have several uh, branches that we can combine into a root like this. And the, bit, and the blockchain is uh, a, uh, basically a Merkle tree where we 
in the Bitcoin blockchain, we merge the transactions into the blockchain. And in Ethereum blockchain, we merge states into the blockchain. And the reason why I can't trick the Bitcoin blockchain is because if I tell some, the network that in these transactions, I received 1 million, 1 million Bitcoins, everyone will be able to check uh, the hash and realize, no, this is false and we will not give you your 1 million Bitcoins. That's it, guys. Uh, we talked about the blockchains. If you are a new viewer, guys, you should definitely subscribe if you like technology, development, programming, blockchains. In, and artificial intelligence because I'm a software developer and I post videos every single day guys. I see you tomorrow.